Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, are all around us in many forms and are here to stay. By analyzing the past progression of GMOs and the paradigm shift that lies within, we can make a prediction of how the market will react to labeling genetically modified organisms in the future. Genetically modified organisms and genetic engineering begins with Gregor Mendel and his observations with dominant and recessive genes in pea plants. Now, as you can see, he can produce a tall plant or a dwarf plant on demand. And although it wasn't his intended purpose, you can intentionally produce just a tall plant, which is genetic modifying in its infancy. Now, the first real genetically modified organism was the cow injected with bovine somatotropin in order to increase milk production. And through extensive testing to ensure safety for both the cow and the human, we were able to have this product introduced to the market and widely accepted, although the safety concerns are still present. And then in the 1990s, we have the flavor saver tomato, a tomato that can be picked close to peak ripeness and stay on the shelf for a longer period of time. But its flaws were that they had a low margin of profit, and with the paradigm shift in 1998, the tomato quickly left the shelves. And that brings us to the shift itself. In 1997, we have the FDA claiming that if a product is substantially equivalent, meaning it looks the same, tastes the same, it must be the same. So as you can see, we can tell which is the GMO and which one is natural, which poses some concerns because this avoids uh, extensive studying over long periods of time to ensure safety for the consumers. And this flaw is demonstrated through Dr. Pustai's experiments with a potato, which was made so that when an insect eats it, the insect dies, but the humans have no negative repercussions. And in a lab test where rats were gi given the potato, they eat it, they die. Whereas when they were given 200 times the sample that was of gene that was put into the potato, they lived thus indicating that we have mutation within the potato, and we gain qualities like a distorted intestinal wall and enlarged stomach lining. All this information gets leaked to the media, and obviously people respond with fear, and this, their reaction is to go for organic foods because they want to control what's going into their body and not be subject to something that has safety concerns. And this idea of control is what generates uh, the sales of organic foods skyrocketing between 1997 and 1998, as indicated in the graph. And this all relates to a plane crash. Because people in general are resistant to air travel, simply because they don't have the control, they're subjecting their lives to what the pilot can do. And also, plane crashes are often sensationalized by social media, et cetera, et cetera. And all in all, planes are more safer than cars, but yet we take cars for granted, we take the danger in daily life, and we're even ignorant toward that, towards that danger by texting and driving and other distractions. So in our attempt to totally avoid genetically modified organisms, we do have these labels like non-GMO and organic, although they can be deceiving. A label like non-GMO verified can be up to 0.9% genetically modified organism within it. Thus we simply cannot escape the grasp of GMOs. And this all catapults into the future. If we were to label every single genetically modified organism, we would first see people like the paradigm shift going directly for the organics in order to substitute the safety for something that is known. And this will cause a dramatic increase in demand. Laws of supply and demand would indicate that the high demand cannot be upheld by the low supply since farmers are going to want to stick with their GM crops that are more efficient and more productive, they're not going to move to organics. And as the price increases of organics, people are going to return back to GMOs because they simply want to eat. <laughs> they need to eat. So over time, people who, I guess, can stick with organics will, but most will return to GMOs, and then organics will simply decline and become a novelty. As the car has demonstrated to us, in its infancy we were uh, hesitant about driving cars, but now we accept the danger in daily life and it's just a fact. And this is the same line that GMOs will take where we will just accept the danger and it will be here to stay. Thank you.